one of the things that people don't realize is that the military, particularly the ones within the classified aspects of it, the military understands that there is actually a deep connection between harnessing and utilizing this invisible grid that surrounds our earth utilizing many different things electromagnetic energy different vibrational frequencies and the military understands that this must be harnessed so in a certain sense the reason why a lot of people haven't made this connection and haven't really come across project unicorn is because people are not looking in the right places and i say that simply because i'm not trying to put anyone else down but people need to understand that the military as well as the government, in many different cases, accepts the fact that, believe it or not, the concept, now bear with me here, the concept of spirituality is in fact intertwined with harnessing the energy that is all around us. And so this is the reason why you'll see CIA documents having to do with astral projection or FBI documents having to do with uh, lucid dreaming and you have things like for example project mk ultra as everybody knows and so the thing here is that i think in this episode you're going to realize there's a much deeper connection between what the military and the cia use to harness weapons and abilities for their own craft and for their own classified projects and they do this in a way that continues to keep peace and balance with the energy grid that is protecting our planet so it's going to get a little bit confusing, but just bear with me because it's worth it. Now, let's jump right into it. So what we have to understand first off is that there's many different types of energy grids that are protecting our planet. Okay. And one of the major things that kind of re reveals this secret to us without us needing to be told is that if we take a step back and we look at the pyramids, the pyramids in one form or another, and I'm not going to say I know exactly what they were all for. However, I know for a fact the pyramids were used to harness energy and not just the, py the pyramids in Egypt. I'm talking about pyramids all over the world, the ones in China, the ones in Mexico, the ones in Europe, all over the place. They're still finding pyramids now that seem to have been tens, if not hundreds of thousands of years old. So clearly something was being utilized here to harness a particular type of energy. Now, whether that was for communicating with other planets in the stars or harnessing the ability to heal people here, utilizing the energy from the sun and from space and aligning it in a way that's mathematically perfect. This is no coincidence. And if you take a look and you do the research that I've done, you'll realize that the same methods that are utilized that were utilized with these pyramids are now actually being applied by the military for weapons having to do with force fields and invisibility cloaks and the reason why i merged the two together is because ultimately people don't realize that project unicorn encompasses all of this they only think it covers one side of it but the other side is the spiritual aspect of it and when i say spiritual I'm talking about energy and vibration. So not always, so, you know, the Akashic records or something like that. But Nikola Tesla said something very, very interesting. And he's absolutely right. People think there's this secret hidden answer that the government is keeping from us as to what makes our life so beautiful in the sense that it can inhabit so much life and it is considered to be a Goldilocks placement within the universe because, again, so many different planets cannot inhabit life for many different reasons. So why can this one? So Nikola Tesla said, and I quote, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And so this explains science but it also explains spirituality. And the reason why I bring this up first off before I get into the cool stuff is because I want to make it very clear that this is not something you can just, you don't have to take my word for. You can actually do this yourself. So it's been said that if you remote view or astral project, if you can stay in there long enough and focus long enough you to allow your soul to travel into space, if you look at Earth, you can actually see a grid encompassing it. And this grid lines up perfectly with where all of the ancient pyramids were placed. 
Now, let's get into the military stuff. The military understands they need to harness these magnetic frequencies and these vibrations, particularly in accordance with the grid that surrounds Earth in order for them to gain the maximum advantage of the weapons that they're building. All right. And so people don't realize that when I say force field, I'm not just talking about the traditional sense of the word that you would see in the movies, a type of shield that protects you. I'm talking about a shield of sorts that essentially becomes impenetrable. A device that could utilize the magnetic frequencies to allow something to encapsulate a city, a person, a couple of houses, a tank, whatever you want. Now, with that being said, there's something more to it because these shields are, in fact, all around us right now. It's in the air of the hand that I'm moving right now. It's in the air that you're breathing. The difference is this. The force field is all around us, but we need to harness that energy and kind of squish it together. And so the way the universe works energetically at least according to Project Unicorn, is that the energy is all around us, but it's distributed fairly separately. It's pretty spread out. But if they were able to make a device that could harness the energy within a particular vicinity and bring it together, kind of squish it together, you would then create enough vibrational pull or vibrational strength to create this force field. And so what happens is that when the energy that comes in and sucks in together to create this force field, you would think, okay, well, what the energy that just kind of sucked in, that means there's empty energy of where this energy used to be. Not true. Because the universe, and again, this is part of what slightly ties in with the idea of there being a simulation theory. The universe unexplainably creates more energy around it to fill that void. So it's constantly unlimited. And this is what Nikola Tesla was on to until obviously he got defunded and shut down because they realized he was on to something good and he was going to make it accessible and free for the world. But uh, again, I'm sure you guys know that story. Now, the interesting thing about this as well is that there was a company, and I believe there still is, in Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken. And what they've been able to do is they've been able to use a cloak device type of material and they were not contracted by the military this is something they were just doing on their own an an invisibility cloak and i'm putting the picture up right now for you guys to see it's certainly a really cool concept now here's the thing and this is where it gets really interesting this is a company that discovered this i'm sure the military already knows about it i'm sure the military's had this for quite some time this is the same material that is put on top of multiple different craft that they're testing out. It's very simple. It's it's like putting a piece of paper on top of a car or a, a blanket over a car. And this is the invisibility cloak device, uh, invisibility mechanism that's used. Now, this is when it gets extremely cool because... Based on the experiments recorded in Project Unicorn, when this cloaking material or fabric, or I guess we could call it blanket, so to speak, has been placed on these craft, you cannot see the craft. It's only, it's completely transparent. However, what you can see if they walk by are supposedly spirits or some type of telepathic energy that can now be visually seen with the human eye so we can't see the device that they're trying to cover up but we can see other things and and that that, that's very interesting because that's not an attribution to the material that's been made by say this company or the material that the or technology that the military has this is this is attributing to the idea that Although the human eye may become invisible to one thing, it opens up the door to another thing. And so what happens here is that you now start seeing things that are completely non-human. And of course the military has utilized this. And there's also speculation that this may be part of Project Bluebeam when it comes to you know, projecting and staging uh, some type of invasion or some type of second coming of Christ or whatever. But anyways... 
I've done a video on that if you guys want to check it out. But the thing here is that it's not just like this is rumored or speculation or there was a whistleblower or a leaker. This is being patented. This is being patented all over. And it's not it's not really difficult to look at because when you when you take a step back and you say, okay, wait a minute. How are you putting this together, Dave, when you're seeing all these things? I'm putting it together because these patents line up perfectly with what the pyramids and the grids around the world and the ancient scriptures and texts have been able to formulate and have been able to withstand over time. And so, again, Boeing has admitted they're working on a real-life force field. And so when a company that's either contracted by the government or is a direct government agency asset talks about this, it means they've probably had it for 50 years now at the very least. And so the force fields are now are also interesting because they can allow things to bounce off of them. And believe it or not, and I, I never usually say this, but it seems like based on the research I've done with Project Unicorn, these force fields may look or resemble similarities to what you see in movies. I mean, in, in the movies in Hollywood, they've kind of done many different um, examples or, or styles of what a force field would look like. But at some point, it comes from somewhere. And this is the next part of it. The next part of Project Unicorn details the CIA directly getting involved with Hollywood to push more superhero entertainment films in order to prepare humanity for the technology that may become public in the near future. Which is insane because... We all knew from the beginning the CIA had assets placed in the entertainment industry all over, not just the U.S., but the world. In, because when you influence entertainment or and influence the minds of the masses, you need to use television or some type of or radio or the Internet or something to get your message out. And the CIA, they understand this. They know. And so... It's not a coincidence that in the last 10 to 15 years, superhero films have sprung up like crazy, particularly superhero films that show and utilize new technology. And so people think that in a lot of cases, Hollywood makes this stuff up. And I'm not trying to discredit the people in Hollywood because a lot of them are great writers and, and creators and visionaries. But at the same time, you have to think as well, where does Hollywood get some of this from? It's... It, 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 it's pretty self-explanatory and people don't realize that because they're too focused on trying to find the little things that might that that the government may have slipped up on but no it's right in front of us and so when i read this in project unicorn and i read that there was a detailing of them discussing inserting assets into the entertainment industry in order to influence the subconscious mind of the masses not just in the u.s but around the world that's when i knew not only did I have to do an episode, but that's when I knew that this is big. This is bigger than just invisibility shields or, or cloaking devices. This is bigger than that. This is connecting to something that ancient civilizations have seemed to have understand for a very long time. And at the very least, if they didn't understand it, they were taught it. So, ultimately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all of the, the evidence down in the description. And if you're watching on YouTube... And you can decide for yourself. But, folks, it's pretty self-explanatory. I spent hours reaching this, uh, researching this. And you can't not think that there is a connection along the lines here. And when you look at the different attributes of Project Unicorn, you can see that the military clearly understands, whether it's their plasma weapons, their laser weapons, their, their, lightning, their thunder, lightning bolt of God weapons, their Project Thor, which I did an episode on a couple weeks, weeks ago. They all understand they need to harness the energy surrounding the earth. And the ancient civilizations understood this as well. And so I don't think that it's that radical or that far out there to presume that the military and the intelligence agencies understand that the real weapons come from harnessing the natural vibrations in the air. And so when they discovered this long ago, they realized over time, we're going to have to implement this idea into mainstream society so people will become accustomed to this type of technology and they do it through entertainment. So let me know what you guys think, because it may not have been the most interesting subject, but 
it's certainly something to to think about because these technologies can probably do things that I wish I knew about that we we don't know yet publicly. I think in invisibility and and shields and force fields is just the very beginning of it. So again, let me know what you guys think and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.